My name is Ryan Reagan. I'm with the Alaska Department of Fish and Game Division of Sportfish. And in this video, we're going to tie an articulated lamprey fly. Uh, it's a good pattern to have in your arsenal, especially if you're targeting rainbows. Before we get started tying this fly, we're going to cover a quick list of materials here that you're going to need to tie this fly. We have 1 8 inch living eyes here. Um, these are designed to be placed in the size of the cone that we're using. And you can see here, I've got the fly with the eyes in it. The eyes on this fly are truly optional, so if you want to tie this fly with the uh, non-eyed cones, perfectly fine. We're using a small section of the uh, gray ice stub here. For the legs, we're using a grizzly coloration on these rubber legs. Our thread is a 210 denier in white. In reality, you're not going to really see the thread through this fly, so uh, coloration of the thread is up to you. My recommendation is that it's just a stronger, heavier duty thread. We're using a section of gray marabou here. Uh, this is about an eight inch section of cross-cut rabbit strip. This style is called chinchilla. The tail we're using is a slow roller tail. and We're going to be using the shanks of two. Uh, in this case, these are size four uh, long shank streamer, streamer hooks. For our stinger hook, this happens to be a size two. You can use whatever size stinger hook uh, that you prefer. We're gonna get started here by applying a thread base to our stinger hook. And I'm gonna come back here and just kind of wrap the thread around just toward the back of the bend there, get rid of my excess material. The first thing we're gonna tie in is the slow roller tail. These come in a variety of colors. We're using black in this instance, and you can see as I pull it, there's a lot of life. When this is in the water, this actually acts as a really nice visual attractor to those fish. There's a lot of life in this. Now, we don't want to tie too, too much in there, so what we're going to do is cut this guy. Uh, we're going to take off about, let's say, an inch, inch and a half. We're going to lay it flat over the shank of the hook, and we're going to tie that guy in. We'll wrap back on the bend slightly. So in the end, you want a tail that kind of looks like, like we have here. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in a section of marabou. So in my hands here, I've got a single marabou feather, and I'm going to just kind of get toward the tip here, um, palmate the fibers a little bit. And realistically, I just want a little portion of that tip. We don't want to tie in too much material. We don't want to have this material interfere with the functioning of the of the tail. So we're just going to kind of come in and lay about, say about that much over there, pull the other fibers forward. I'm going to leave that hanging there and just tie that material in. I like to pull it back a little bit, kind of wrap back on itself. And I'm going to wrap my thread to the eye of the hook. Now I'm going to take this marabou feather and I'm actually going to twist it. I'm going to be kind of gentle here because I don't want to snap off the, the vein there. And so as I have it twisted, I'm just going to start wrapping forward wraps uh, just adjacent to each other toward the eye of the hook where my thread is. And once I've reached that point, I'm going to just go ahead and wrap this, wrap this in, pull everything back, exposing the eye of the hook. We want kind of a clean, clean head on this fly or this portion of the fly. If materials get caught up, you can simply just pull them back. As I've got that wrapped in there, I'm going to go ahead and trim this out. So what I've got here is I've got kind of a longer section of these marabou fibers that are kind of hanging out. I'm going to come in here and actually trim those just using my fingers. You can trim them with your scissors if you so choose, but I'm just going to rip them out a little bit. And this is about where we want it right here. A couple more wraps and whip finish. Small dab of head cement or even super glue will help further strengthen the integrity of this fly. Grab a section of our 80 pound braided line. Um, this, as I said, is just 80 pound braided line. You can use fly line backing, wire, whatever your choice is. And while we have the fly in the vise, we're simply going to run the 
braided line through. I'm going to come up to about halfway. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and pull this fly out of the vise and put in the second hook. With the second hook in the vise, again, this is a number four um, longer shank streamer fly hook. We're going to come in here and add a thread base. We're going to judge the preliminary distance here based on how long this section is going to be. This is going to be one of two sections we're going to add using this style hook. And so I'm going to stop just a little bit shy of the point of the hook. And I'm going to come in here with my stinger hook. And I'm going to lay a portion of that braided line over there. And I'm going to kind of judge the distance there. Again, we're going to end up cutting the, the portion of the shank with the bend and the point in the barb of this particular hook right here off. So we'll just come in here and apply this with a few loose wraps, secure it down. I like to slightly wrap the braided line back on itself a little bit. I think it gives it a little bit more integrity. Adding a dab of super glue to this helps secure the braid to the shank of this section of the hook. After we've done that, we're going to make sure we wrap forward toward the eye. And then we're going to come in here, holding our two pieces of this braided line, we're actually going to wrap around the hook. Come in here once we've done that, put some wraps in, kind of come back on itself a few times. We're going to take this section and we're simply going to remove it. I've selected a long strip of the crosscut zonker strip here and when you tie this down you want to make sure that the hairs are actually going to go, when they lay down, go back toward, toward the back of the hook. So I've taken about a little over an inch section here and I'm going to lay this down. I like the end of these to go just a little bit over the eye of the stinger hook. Again, we don't want too much interference as this, as this fly is working in the water. And if you put a little too much in there, you can always trim a little bit off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and secure this into the shank of the, of the forward hook here. I like to come back, wrap back on itself, adds a little more security. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap forward to the eye of the hook. Now at this point, adding another dab of super glue is not a bad idea. Just again, helps secure this zonker strip to the shank. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap forward, pulling the hairs back if they get ahead. Just kind of clean the fly up a little bit as you go. Again, these wraps are just adjacent to one another, coming forward in more of a a corkscrew type pattern and we'll just kind of wrap forward parceling those hairs out as we go. Once we've reached the eye we're going to go ahead and secure this. I want that strip laying flat basically over the eye of the hook. I'm going to come back, pull everything back a little bit and if you get a little bit crowded there on your eye, you can always kind of come in there and just stretch it out. We just want a nice, tight, secured head on this fly where that material lays down. This is going to end, ultimately get covered up, so if the head of the fly doesn't look how you want it, don't get too concerned. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this guy at this point. And again, adding a small dab of head cement or even super glue to this is going to help reinforce the overall durability. At this point, I'm going to take this hook out of the vise and I'm going to put another one in the vise. That's going to be the front forward section of our fly. This is the forwardmost section of our hook here. And as you can see, I've added the cone head to this. So we want to make sure we add our cone head prior to uh, wrapping thread on it. We're not going to use as much of this shank here on the most forward facing section of this hook. So we're actually only going to come down about, about halfway down the shank here before we begin tying in the other section. So I've simply added another section of braided line to my middle hook and I'm going to lay that down here and just go ahead, secure that in.
And again, I'll come back, wrap back on itself just a little bit. I'm gonna add just a small layer of super glue here, running it over the shank of the hook before I begin twisting my, or tying in my, my braided line here. Once you've reached the eye, just go ahead and wrap in your material here. After I've trimmed the excess off, I'm just gonna simply come on back here and I'm gonna get behind that small bump that was created and just put my thread right there. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna grab that forward section of the uh, rabbit strip and I'm gonna lay it just flat over the shank of the hook. One thing to keep in mind here as you do this, you don't wanna to pull too forward because you'll see it will create a, a small curve in that braided line. We want to make sure this, when this flies in the water, it's just got a lot of natural life. So we wanna just basically line up our point where we tie in this rabbit strip so it's not pulling too far or too hard on that section of braid we've got right there. So you can kind of see how that's working there. And I'm gonna pull this back, wrap over a few more times, come forward until I'm under the, basically under the cone head here. Again, super glue being a really strong adhesive, I'm just coming in here to apply a small section there. And we're gonna come forward with our rabbit strip. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of room before the head or before the eye of the fly, eye the hook. We'll come in here and just wrap that up. Now I'm gonna trim this material at this point right here. You can see I've got just a, a section up in here where I've left a little, little section open just below cone head. At this point we're going to tie in our rubber legs. I'm starting with my thread kind of position back toward where the material ends and I'm going to tie, typically what I do is I grab a section of four of these legs and I usually have them basically using my fingers take a general estimate of what half would be and I lay them on either side of the hook shank. Just tying them in pulling them back over each other. That's one section. Do the other section on the other side. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a dubbing loop. Creating a dubbing loop is rather easy. You just take your pointer finger and your middle finger, lay it over your thread, pull your thread out, kind of ease it out just a little bit and come up in here and wrap your line so you've got this, this loop here created. You can see my two fingers can spread it out. I'm gonna use my dubbing loop spinner here. I'm gonna take a small section of the ice dub and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna lay this down in here. Now you can, you can wet the line a little bit. Some people use wax. We're just choosing to use, uh, just wet our fingers a little bit and rub it down on there. Um, come in here, kind of spread your material out. Once it's roughly in there. There's a few different ways to do this. This is just how I do it. I feel like it's a quick and easy recipe to do this. And I'm just going to grab the line down there at the bottom and give my uh, dubbing loop spinner a twist. A couple twists. You can see I've moved my thread more toward the eye of the hook. This is basically the section I'm going to cover with this, this uh, section of dubbing. In truth, this 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 is optional. I like it because it adds a little bit, a little bit of a little more color to your fly. But if you didn't want to go with this step, it's not the end of the world. At this point, we're almost we've almost completed the fly. One last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take another single marabou feather and I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to simply trim the tip off. I really just want to get access to that, to that portion of the vein that's right there. And I'm going to go ahead and lay that, lay that in there and just do a few simple loose wraps. Make sure my material's out of the way, kind of wrap forward a little bit. 
All right, now that I have that, I'm going to take that marabou, and I'm just going to simply wrap that in. You don't need that many wraps on this. One or two is sufficient. What we're really trying to do is just build a small collar on this. So I've probably done about two and a half wraps there. That should be fine. Go ahead and just secure this material in. After you do that, come back, build that thread up over there, catching all the material that's under there. Snip close to where the vein meets the under portion of that cone head. Pull everything back, make sure everything is laid evenly. A couple more secured wraps here, and we're going to put a whip finish on this guy. And we are almost done. Now that we've completed the whip finish, simply trim your excess material off. And this fly is, by all accounts, almost done. What I'm going to do with these legs here is I'm going to allow them to hang like that. I'm going to come in here and just trim them off. I'm using a 1 1 8 inch eye on this cone head. This cone head is designed specifically to accept this size eye. Make sure when you're at your local fly store, you're purchasing the uh, cones with the proper eye size in there. I've added a small dab of super glue in there and I'm just simply using my whip finish tool here to position that eye in there. In reality you can do this with a non-eyed cone head. It's probably fine. Lamprey have a quite of a, a smaller eye in proportion to their body. We're just using these to give a little bit more of a of uh, life. And we're going to come in and do the same thing on the other side. So at this point, our fly is essentially complete. What we're going to do now is come in here, and I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to come in and just trim the shank and the bend and barb off of this front hook. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing to the middle hook. So when we're fishing this fly, we're essentially only using one hook, which is our stinger hook right here. All right, so we've wrapped up the construction of this lamprey fly. Uh, it may seem like a lot of material at this point, but when you get this stuff wet, it really comes down to a very slim profile. Lamprey in the natural world are quite a, a slim looking fish, and they do kind of tend to run more toward the bank. So when you're fishing this, try the swing method or cast it out and strip it in. Uh, you can also use this on lakes. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the water.